Hello, Bitwig certified end user and professional DJ, Vic Vapor with you, and welcome to my Bitwig Studio 2.3 course. This course is designed to help the beginner and the experienced producer. So if you're a beginner and you're just discovering Bitwig for the first time, this course will help you navigate and find your way around and get your productions up and running quick and easily. Now, if you're an experienced producer and you're migrating over from a new or different DAW, welcome to Bitwig Studio 2.3. Before we get started, I just want to say if it's the first time you're visiting the Martini Lounge channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell and we'll see you inside. Hello, welcome. DJ Vic Vapor with you. And this is the Bitwig Studio 2.3 course. In this video, we're going to take a look at the dashboard. So when you first open Bitwig Studio 2.3, this is what you're presented with, is the screen right here in the dashboard. So the dashboard has uh, four main sections, and we'll take a brief look at each of these. We won't go into too much detail. I'll just help you understand and how, how to find some of the key features that'll get you up and running. So under the recent, under the user in the recent um, location, you're gonna see all your recent projects or recent, uh, yeah, well, recent templates or projects right there. So these are my projects. So these may be older projects or something specific that I've worked on in the past. Those will be available here. Templates, or more like if you wanna set up Bitwig Studio to a default setting and maybe have multiple versions of uh, templates that you can use maybe that are specifically routed to hardware devices or set up for specific performance natures. For instance, I've got one here that's a DJ setup template, and then I've got a few other templates that I use with different plugins that are already routed for me so I don't have to waste time getting everything up and running and rerouted and all that. So good way to make use of uh, Bitwig Studios to organize and set up templates that will be beneficial to your workflow. And finally, under the user tab, we've got demos. This is a great place to stop if you have time and go ahead and look at ways that other producers or other uh, individuals are using the DAW itself. Some demos here and different things, different ideas for you to get your head wrapped around ways to use uh, Bitwig Studio. Next, we've got settings. And under settings, we've got a bunch of different categories. But first, we'll take a look at the user interface. And the user interface is designed for your screen arrangement. So currently, we're going to be using single display large. But if you have multiple screens, or even a, maybe a touch screen, the touch screen you can use here under the tablet. Tablet setup would be good for you. And if you have a smaller screen, you can use this. And if you have, you know, triple or multiple displays, you can choose any of those. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see, audio. Audio is kind of important. So we won't be hitting everything. I'm, like I said, I'm just trying to help you get up and running here. So audio is an important aspect that help you interact with your audio interface. So what you want to have here is you want to be able to locate your audio interface. Currently, I'm using a USB audio interface, a Yamaha. And then I've got the Soundflower arrangement set up as an output device because that's helping me with the uh, screen capture in the tutorials. Yours, of course, may be a little different. Next, you've got your sample rate, and then you've got your sample um, sizes. So this is relatively important. So the sample size you can set and allow Bitwig to detect what's best for you by hitting the auto. But if you're a little bit more advanced user and you want to have something specific set here, you can take the auto feature off and then you can choose your sample size. Sample size is referring to how much of a delay you get if you're using external hardware or some, some different plugins. There might be a delay between when notes are struck or when effects actually happen. So the trade-off here is the smaller the sample size, the smaller the delay. But unfortunately, the smaller the sample size, the more CPU is required. So just be careful of how you balance that according to what your needs are. Next, you'll see stereo input and speaker arrangements here. Now, again, I've got a Yamaha USB interface that has really no inputs and outputs other than my microphone and uh, one little section. So it's pretty basic. Um, so we're not seeing a lot of options here, but yours could look differently. If you have an audio interface that has multiple ins and outs, you can see those listed here, and then you can select them accordingly. So let's take a look at controllers. Under the controller area, here is where if you're using a um, MIDI controller, you can have this arrangement set up. 
So you can ask Bitwig to detect the MIDI controller. And currently I've got Ableton Push 2. And you can download that script if you own Ableton Push 2. You can download that script at bitwig.com in the community section. Um, additionally, if you hit detect available controllers and for some reason Bitwig doesn't detect yours, you can go over here and drop this down and edit manually just by selecting it from the list here. So a couple different options for you to get your MIDI controller up and running. Let's take a look at packages. So here under packages, we'll find a collection of partner collections and different extended collections that come with Bitwig when you install it. So you can choose to install manually on your own. And it looks like I still have one to go, but I would recommend installing these if you're following along through the course, because there may be periodically times that I'm going to use samples from these collections and these packs. And then we finally got the help menu. The help menu, of course, is access to bitwig.com and the community in different areas where you're going to find tutorials and, uh, again, how-to and different things that will help you along your way within your productions, uh, even the Bitwig forum here. Currently, it's the beta 2.3 forum, but it'll probably update to the 2.3 forum itself. So, you know, if you're having trouble figuring something out and you aren't, you aren't finding the answers within anybody's um, different courses or tutorials, you can definitely jump on the forum and see if any other users are experiencing the same thing. So that's a quick look in navigation through and around the Bitwig Studio 2.3 dashboard. Let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson and see what else we can learn.